The 1987 Commodore Amiga is a machine I absolutely adore. It's quite archaic nowadays, and all the software is slowly rotting away on floppy disks suffering from disk rot, but it's a fascinating little all-in-one computer that, when used well, could compete with its 16-bit console brethren. The home micros at the time were absolutely loaded with arcade ports, and these were often developed by small developers working under different publishers from Sega, who had licensed their properties for release on the system. It's a strange sequence of events that means there's very little consistency between each development, but it does make for some fascinating lessons in how to port an arcade game. In this video we're taking a look at five Sega titles that made their way to the Amiga, and just to be interesting, these are five games that I only discovered for the first time while making this video. First impressions, baby! G-Lock, or Lack of Consciousness due to G-Force, is a first-person air combat game that very much follows the groundwork laid down by the Afterburner franchise. It's memorable for its R360 arcade cabinet, which could do complete rotations in all directions. Obviously, a home port can't do that, but can it accurately bring its mission-based structure where you take down set numbers of enemies in a fixed time limit? Well, it can, and it does so surprisingly well, which is quite impressive considering how naff the Amiga version of Afterburner is. The main thing that's lost in the transition is the detail from the ground below. It's often just a plain colour, which is fine because the action itself stays remarkably quick and intense, and you even get the third-person transitions when the enemy gets on your tail. This is generally loads better than I was expecting, and well worth a look. Ports of Galaxy Force 2 tend to suffer due to the arcade version using so many scaling objects on screen, and the consoles and computers of the time just don't have the necessary power to pull off sprite scaling. The Amiga also has the uphill battle of trying to pull off sprite scaling without the required grunt, but somehow finds a decent middle ground that makes this port of Galaxy Force 2 extremely playable. The action is thick and frantic, and while it's clearly missing a lot of detail, like the G-Lock port, the core gameplay is intact and it makes this a pretty solid port of a game the Amiga shouldn't really be able to handle this well. Time Scanner is an oft-forgotten video pinball title from Sega that bizarrely got an Amiga port but never showed up on any of Sega's own home consoles. While the arcade version is a decent enough game with some good physics for a video pinball title of this heritage, the Amiga port is a mess. The ball does not move correctly at all, seeming to speed up and slow down of its own free will. Firing it off the flippers also feels strange and imprecise, and it makes this a difficult game to enjoy. The game also features flick-screen scrolling, which is a bizarre choice for the Amiga, as the system is perfectly capable of smooth scrolling. Considering how well known the Amiga is for video pinball software, this is an early effort that deserves to be forgotten in favour of genre-defining titles like Pinball Dreams, which would come later. This Shinobi port is... alright, but the Amiga can do so much better than this. Visually, it's not very attractive, with a strange choice of dirty, muddy colours in its presentation. The scrolling isn't very smooth at all, and it also suffers from that age-old Amiga problem of mapping jump to up on the joystick. This does not make for a very intuitive control scheme, and it also makes jumping to and from the roofs feel really weird and inaccurate. But you do get used to it, and it's certainly playable enough to get some enjoyment from. It's just not as good as it could have been. And finally, we're going to take a look at Scramble Spirits. The original version of this vertically scrolling shoot 'em up has lovely high resolution graphics, and the Master System also received a really impressive port that scales down the action and visuals really well. This Amiga version tries to focus on the impressive graphics of the original arcade version, and unfortunately falls flat as a result. 
the sprites are simply too large for the play area, making avoiding enemy fire really difficult. Also, the controls suffer from this single fire button as well. Holding the button down allows for auto fire, but as soon as you get an option for additional fire, you need to switch to tapping the fire button because holding it also performs a smart bomb. I wasted a few of these without realising what was happening during gameplay, and it's just a clumsy design choice that doesn't help this port.